Hello and welcome to the first video on John Walton's six-part Lost World series. Walton is an Old Testament scholar specializing in ancient Near Eastern backgrounds, and he's also the primary professor of biblical exegesis at Wheaton College. Today's video will be on Genesis 1, ancient cosmology and the origins debate. So let's get started. First, he details his hermeneutic, or his interpretive principle. He's interested in a literal reading of the text, but for him that means that we understand that Genesis was written for us, but not to us. It was written to ancient Israel, and they were a part of an ancient Near Eastern society. To help us understand how Israel and their neighbors thought about origins, he gives the example of a chair versus a company. How do we know they exist? We look at a chair and it has four legs, a place to sit. We say it exists. But with a company, does it exist just because it has a record from the city? Perhaps, but perhaps people would argue that it exists when it functions as it should for that city or for that society. Walton argues that Israelites viewed the world more like this company. They viewed it in terms of its function in an ordered system. Days 1 through 6 are functional. He gives the example of day 1 being about the creation of time, and day 2 about space and weather, and day 3 about food processes. And this is exactly in line with how other ancient Near Eastern cultures thought at the time of Israel. He thinks that this idea is further advanced by when God speaks after the flood and the reversal of all things he created in the flood waters, when he says, food processes, weather, and time will never again cease. If God describes his creation in these functional terms, why shouldn't we? He then examines some relevant words and phrases in the Genesis 1 text. In the beginning, he argues, just delineates the beginning of a time period, not necessarily the beginning of everything. And this is in accord with how we see it used in other parts of Scripture. He then says that bara, to create, is functional in its perspective. It really doesn't demand any materialistic origin anywhere in Scripture. Other places that is used are ambiguous. But because functional is primary, we should view it in functional terms. Tohu vavohu, often translated waste and void, is also functional in meaning. Walton thinks the best interpretation of the word tohu is unproductive, based off of its 20 occurrences. It doesn't demand any materialistic interpretation. Good is also functional, Walton argues. The negation of good in context in Genesis 3 is when Adam is unproductive or incomplete because he doesn't have Eve. Therefore, something that is good is something that is complete and productive. Walton notices that resting, creation, and rule are all connected in the biblical literature and other ancient Near Eastern literature. Read Psalm 132. Because of this and other considerations, he thinks that we should view Genesis 1 as the building of a cosmic temple in which the deity will then reside in and rule and rest. All of this is for the benefit of humanity. And what's more, he sees that Genesis 1 is actually talking about the inauguration of this cosmic temple. Temples were often inaugurated in a seven-day period, just like we see in Genesis. Also check out Exodus 35 to 39 and 1 Kings chapter 8. Walton calls this view he's proposing the cosmic temple inauguration view. Walton then compares and contrasts his cosmic temple inauguration view of Genesis 1 with other views of Genesis 1, like the young earth, old earth, and gap theory views. He thinks that these views are too materialistic in their idea of origins, but he does think that the theological framework and literary perspectives of Genesis 1, though reductionistic in themselves, could possibly integrate into his view that he's proposing. As you can imagine, 
The cosmic temple inauguration view that Walton is proposing has met with quite a few critiques, such as can't the material and functional emphases coexist in Genesis 1? And why are we to say that Walton is right and everybody else is wrong? All these traditional interpretations are just wrong. Many people also argue that his view of the Hebrew words and their use in scripture is too reductionistic and therefore unconvincing. And he also seems to treat the Bible just like any other ancient Near Eastern document. People have a problem with that. And can't the biblical authors say things that are beyond their understanding? But the question is, what do you think? And what do you think the theological implications of this view are, if correct? Whatever your opinions may be, definitely do not miss the next video on this series, The Lost World of Adam and Eve, Genesis and the Human Origins Debate. And until then, continue on in your quest for truth.